yeah. it would really it would it would make me look at myself and the reality of what was done to me and it would it would it would shatter me that at first i really didn't like you you didn't at like all. me i didn't like you because my it mama felt don't like, like you she <laughs> likes everyone when 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 are you going to hook that plantation up <laughs> i'm working on it <laughs> amazing <laughs> amazing tim welcome to the show you're on the air hey jesse hey tim how are you Oh man, I'm good. I uh, I tell you, Jesse, you, sometimes you scare me, man. It's it's incredible how you know how you could tap into the human condition and, and and you know the emotional love. I'm sitting here listening, you know, for my turn to get on, and, and you were talking about the emotional. It, it's incredible. Yeah, it, it it's uh, you're something else. And Tim, but, every um, hu- the truth of it is inside of every human being. But if you have anger, you're not going to see the wisdom of it. It's when you overcome that heart change from anger to love, which is the, the, the nature, the identity of God. You're going to start seeing it for yourself as well. It's already in you. That's why you recognize it when you hear it from me. You want to know what's right, but it's already in you. Yeah, it's that, well, you know. I mean, without going into great detail, I yeah, I, I grew up with a lot of anger. I had a I had a terrible mother that that went out of her way to to really uh, make things harder than they had to be. Yeah, but you know yeah. you don't you don't realize you know you know it it took me it took me decades to realize you know the the trauma she did to me. Yeah, because you know you don't want to admit that the people that are supposed to love you weren't doing that. You know, it's it's shame. It's embarrassment. You know, you don't want to admit it to yourself how, how damaged you are because when you sit and you really, like, it would really affect me if I smoked some pot, like really powerful weed. Yeah. Can, can I talk about that on the radio? I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh-huh. Just. It would yeah. It would really, it would, it would make me look at myself and the reality of what was done to me. And it would, it would, it would shatter me. You know, you, you would. You know, you can see how people are, are driven to suicide yeah. when they're on these drugs. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because your mind, it just turns on you. And it's, well, I don't know if it turns on you or if it's just showing you the truth. And you kind of live, like, when you're sober and you're not high, you, you kind of you live, like, in this false sense of, of reality. But then when you smoke some powerful, you know, weed, it, it shows you the reality of who you are. And sometimes it was very difficult for me to see that, you know, and it was because my mother, she hated men. She hated me. And I, and I didn't and until recently, you know, listening to you that I, I come to that realization, you know, Amazing. and that's have, kind of why I'm calling. Have I'm you, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. And, 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 and why you're calling is what? I, I, I can never forgive this woman. I, I don't. I can't. I, I mean, it, it was too much done. <laughs> and, you know what I mean. And I know you tell me I need to forgive. You, you say that a lot, but I, Jesse, I can't do it. I hate her so much, I, and I, I can't. I there's no way I can forgive this person. And why can't you forgive her? It was she did some really terrible things to me. You know what I mean? How old are you now? 52. And have you done terrible things in your 52 years of being on earth? I did very bad things to women. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I wasn't I was a nice guy. It took, it so took you, me, beca- you became just like your mother? I did. 100%. And could you help yourself when you were doing those things? Was it you or no. something else driving you to do it? No. And it's funny because... What you were talking about while I was on hold, the emotional love. It yeah. was, you know, any any woman that that was unlucky enough to fall into my spider web, you know, I, I unfailingly when they tried to pull away because they could see what kind of person I was. Right. You know, I was, I was, you know, and then I took it personally and I became vindictive, and you know what I mean? Yeah. You it became was, just was, like your mama. You were acting just like her. You have her identity. I know. Yep. And and, and you realize that 
like, even in my today to day life, you know, sometimes I hear myself complain and yeah, no one that, that that's not what a man's supposed to do. Is not it? at all. You're right about that. Not it's not the man's nature. Period to do that. And so well, let I me ask you, let me ask him: Would you would you want God to forgive you for what you have done? Yes. And yeah. why would you want God to forgive you? Well, that's another thing, Jesse. You know, I was raised Catholic, you know, and I don't know if you know anything about this religion. It's a it, mess. It, I, don't, I don't think it should exist anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? I so so for, for that reason, I left the church, you know, and I became, you know, I, I for all my faults, I'm actually a pretty informed guy. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, you know, and, and I listen to a lot of Jordan Peterson. You should, I'd love to hear you and him get together, man. That'd be great. You and Jordan Peterson. It'd be amazing. But, I have um, interviewed him before. Oh, I gotta, I gotta look for that. I gotta try and find that. Yeah. All right. That's good. Um, but you know, Jordan Peterson, he, he, um, I, Jesse, I, I don't want to offend you, but I guess I'm, I've been kind of an atheist for a long time. You know what I mean? Nice. Like it's hard, it's hard for me to believe that a man lived inside of a fish for three days and, 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 and the virgin birth and you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not, I'm not. A why kid, do you, you know need what I mean? to, why do you need to believe that? Isn't that what you're supposed to believe? Is that what the Bible says? You got to believe all this. Why do you need to believe that? The Bible never said you had to believe that. But anyway, yeah, well, but, but anyway, that was my point. So like I, I, I turned my back to the bio, to the to religion because of that. But then you know, as I get older, but Tim, tell me why the, do you need to believe all that? Well, I, that's what I'm getting to. That I, I realize, you know, uh, you know, through you know the, the modern internet and podcasts and more people having a voice. You know, you listen to Jordan Peterson, I, and I kind of took a page out of his book, and I, I, I kind of act as if God exists. You know what I mean? And I realized. The fact that that the, how lucky I was to grow up in a country with Judeo Christian values, yeah, and and I've traveled around the world and I've been to countries that don't have them, and it's you see stuff and people that you, that shouldn't be there. You know what I mean? So, and, Tim, and, because of time here, why don't you? Um, what gives you a right not to forgive your mother? Since you know better than her, what give you a right? And you haven't even taken a to- taken a stone out of your own eyes. What give you the right to not forgive your mother? I've tried to talk to her, right? But she's so full of venom and hatred, it's, and and won't even won't even entertain a discussion of trying to you know listen to what. She did to me and how it's impacted. She denies it, and unfailingly, it turns into a, a me, you know, cussing her out and putting the phone down. You know what I mean? What gives it, you the right not to forgive her? I normally just I, 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 it takes me a minute. Sometimes you say stuff, and I got to listen to it a couple of times for it to make sense. I'm really trying to. I, I don't understand. I, I'm not getting it. What do you, what do you mean? The, gives me the right. You have done the same thing, or even worse, in some cases, and and you can help yourself. The same spirit that drove your mother or is driving her to do what she did to you, is in you, and you're doing it to others. No, and, I don't do it anymore. I'm I'm a good person now. I, I, no, you're uh, not a good. How can you be a good person? And hate your mother. I, I can't. If you met her, <laughs> you'd see. <laughs> You know, there's but, some people that are bad people, Jesse, that don't deserve Right, it. but it's not about her, it's about you. If you want peace, perfect peace, if you want paradise on earth, you must enter into the kingdom of heaven. You must be born again so that he can draw you into the kingdom within you, and you you will overcome evil with good, but your mother will just stay in her hell until she's ready to come out of it. And all you need to do is just say, hey, I'm sorry for resenting you. I realize that you can help yourself just like I can. I realize because you can help yourself, Tim. 
And so, and I, and I gotta say this to I gotta say this to her. Yes. Now you can't make her listen to her. Don't argue with her. Don't try to make her listen. Don't don't have any expectation for her, and that she's gonna apologize or anything. Don't ask for forgiveness. God will forgive you when you see that. Yes, my mother did this to me, but I'm wrong for resenting her. She couldn't help it. And God will forgive yeah. you, and your mother stare her hell, but you'll be able to freely live your life right here on earth, and it'll be amazing. Yeah, but the thought, the, even, the thought of even having that conversation turns my stomach. And where are those thoughts coming from? Straight out of hell. They're coming from your daddy, the devil. The last yeah. thing the devil wants you to do is forgive because if you for, truly forgive, he's going to lose your soul. And he wants to continue to torment you in order to keep you away from the Father, in order to destroy your soul. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I could do it anytime soon. I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I'll think about it, I guess. But so you don't see it, that it's as wrong. It's easier said than done, Jesse. Right, but you don't see that it's wrong to resent her? No, I don't. Well, you are wrong. I, I, you... I enjoy it. <laughs> I hate resent. I hate. I love hating her. All hateful people love hating, except for those who want to overcome. But they love. I don't want to be hateful. But you do. Want to you said, I don't want to. If you didn't want it, you would let it go and not love it. I don't know what to do with it. I'm sorry. I don't know what else to do with it. You can overcome it by realizing you're in hell. You love your hell, but your hell ain't making you happy. And you no, should... I'm okay. I mean, I don't have any kids. I'm not, you know, I don't have a serious girlfriend, but I got a nice little condo. But you have no kids. And peace. I got my animals, and I got some plants, and I just kind of, you know, I realize that I'm, you know, I'm not good for women. But you have and no I just peace. Stay away from them. You have no peace, Tim. You can it's gain the world, but you're losing your soul. You have no peace. I don't know. Maybe. Are you? You have you heard me talk about the silent prayer? I don't. I've heard you talk about the silent prayer, but I don't know what it is. Go to my uh, YouTube channel www dot silent prayer dot video and start doing that today, and you will see and. Facing your mother is going to be the hardest thing you will ever have to do in life. Once you face her, fear will disappear and you'll be fine. And I wanted to ask ask about his father. Well, she was nineteen and he was twenty seven when they met. Um, I think he I think they were married for about six months, and then he was gone. Um. We tried, we met when I was about 15. Uh, he was around for about five years. It was a five year block of time where he was around about six months and he disappeared for three months. He'd be around for about, you know, you know, nine months and he disappeared for six months. And then the last year, I actually stayed with him and, um, I bought a car and he allowed me to put the insurance under his name, right? Yeah. I'd get rear-ended by a nurse shell, New York nurse shell cop, right? The car was a piece of junk, so they gave me, they sent me a check, but he, but he had the insurance under his name, so he took the check and threw me out of the house, and, uh, man, I had to pay, it was, uh, it wasn't pleasant, man, he wasn't, you know, because I was growing up with this, this horrible woman, and, and they always think, man, if, my, if only my dad was around, yeah. he'd make this all good. But it turns out he was a bigger piece of garbage than she was. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, so basically, long story short, I kind of ended up raising myself, me in a television set, you know, and, uh, yeah, he wasn't so great. You know, I remember I had a job making a couple hundred bucks a week, you know, when I was, you know, and, 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 uh, he took half of it <laughs> as rent. Yeah, but it was better than being with the mother. It wasn't easy. Have you gone and forgiven him for his weakness? Oh, um, well, you know, it's been, God, I haven't thought about it in 30 years. You know, it's, uh, yeah, it's, um, 
No, I, I I I don't give many thought at all. You know, I mean I I mean, well, the funny thing is I got a I got a Facebook message from his from his girlfriend that he was dating back then. They're still together thirty years later, and uh, she said that he um, he he uh, can't beat himself. He's uh, got dementia. He can't talk. And they basically, you know, sits in a wheelchair all day or a bed or wherever they put his ass, you know. <laughs> and uh, so I just kind of, I got a, I got a chuckle out of that. But what made me sad, though, I, I'm not gonna lie, it did kind of choke me up. She said that they mentioned my name and his eyes opened. Yeah. And it's apparently his eyes don't open much. But um, Jim, yeah, all was, fathers, fathers love their children. And when they leave, they don't leave their children. They leave the the mother of the children. But the father love you. And I would highly recommend, do what you want, of course. I would highly recommend that you go and forgive him before he aspires. And forgive your mother so you can be over with this. You can be free. Yeah, he doesn't talk, though. He doesn't have to. You go and talk to him. Hey, Dad, I'm sorry for resenting you. I realize now you couldn't help it. And he Drive need, down to Florida. Well, call, can you FaceTime with him? Nah, he's he's uh, he's like got one foot in the grave, one in a banana peel. Can you know? uh, can that uh, <laughs> can that uh, that lady he lived with? She doesn't know how to use the FaceTime. Oh yeah, maybe. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we could do so. All right, maybe I could do something with her. Yeah. All Be- right. Because you you you're showing love to your father and your mother when you forgive them. And I'm telling you, Tim, when you can see for yourself, not just because I said it, when you can see that you need to forgive, it's going to blow your mind, man. And when you see well, that it's wrong, yes, it's wrong what happened, but they can help it. They literally could not I, help themselves. I'm going to take your word for it because you're a lot smarter than me. And, and I, it's not going to be easy. You know, right. I spent a long, I spent the majority of my life hating these people. Right. You know, they just brought me into the world and, and, and basically just kicked me around like a dog, you know, and uh, it's like, you know, thanks for nothing. Do you think you if know, they could have... Life has been very difficult because of it. You do know? you think that if they could have done better, they would have? I, I don't know. I don't think so. Because you know Why? Why? I, I've gotten better with age. I know for a fact that I'm a better person just from age and experience. And my mother has not changed a bit. She's still she's still 17 years old. But she doesn't. And, she's and, not ready. She love her hell. But what what you don't understand, you know better. The, the person that has the anger and judging is as bad as the person that brought on the anger as when you were a kid. You well, no, let me ask you this. You're no let me better or different than your parents. What if, what if, what if she's the only one I do that to, and everybody else in my life I'm nice to, and I do, I read, you know, I do everything right by everybody else, but I just kind of, you know, have a little box in my head that I put these people in, and I just, you know, lock it up, and don't touch it. <laughs> I wouldn't make that plan if I were you. I would just start living life in the present, in the moment. But, but once you forgive them, you will be able to walk away from them and just live your life. You wouldn't have to deal with them anymore. Not only in your think, imagination, but you wouldn't have to deal with them in a physical way unless you wanted to. Yeah. But right now they're living uh, in your head. Oh yeah, they're living there rent free. Right. And so but that would disappear. You would have a clear mind if you were to forgive them. Uh I'll give it a shot. But uh, but you got to first see that you're wrong. Just like you could not help yourself with that anger over the years. You got to first see that you're wrong for resenting them. That's why you've been suffering. You I have know, not, I, hear that. I hear you say that, but I don't get it. You yeah. have not been suffering because of what they did to you. You have been suffering because you have not forgiven them. You've been judging them. It's no, not, I've been suffering. I've been suffering because I, I I didn't have anybody give me guidance and encouragement and and no, and, that's and not why you're tools. suffering. That's not why you. I had to basically learn everything myself 
but and and raise myself and learn how to interact with people and and jobs and women and it, myself would would see, I, I was basically like I could have been raised by wolves and then somebody but, found me in the forest and said okay here's society there you go but Tim that's now not go why work, you were suffering now go work Tim Tim you only yeah. suffer you've been suffering like we all suffer because you have not forgiven them it's the unforgiveness that turns you away from the Father that's causing you to suffer. You have not been able to see clearly all your life. You have not had a clear mind. No, I haven't. And that's what I the suffering is. The suffering is not from the things you have to do. The suffering is not the lack of a clear mind. Your heart needs to change. I hate to give it to her, though. I hate, not, I hate, to, I hate <laughs> to go to her and talk. And the idea of going to her and talking nice to her. It just turns my stomach. But you're not talking yeah. nice. You're talking right. You're not yeah, asking you're right. for anything. You're forgiving her because she can not help herself. As you can't help yourself, man. And stop uh, listening to the devil in your head. You're listening to the evil spirits. You're possessed in the mind and emotions. Yeah. And you're listening to them right now. I know. I know I am. I don't know what else to listen to. So don't let the devil talk you out of forgiveness, out of forgiving, because he doesn't want to lose your soul. So he's working overtime. He doesn't want you to hear this message of forgiveness. He doesn't want you to know that because he wants you to stay in the darkness. He wants your soul forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Yeah. Let me know how it goes, Sam. Go and forgive. Hey, I got to ask you one question. Yes. What did you think about what New York did um, with that with that law? They suspended for one year to get Donald Trump. That's what's going to happen to you when you overcome your mother. <laughs> the devil going to go after you through other people because you become the light of the world, and the evil people hate the light, and it's going to happen to you too. Maybe different situations, but it's going to be yeah. the same spirit. All right, Jesse, I'll give it a shot, man. All right. Let me know how it goes, all right? I will. I right. will. All right, buddy. Thanks. You're Bye. welcome. Bye now. Amazing. Mimi, welcome to the show. You're yeah. on the air. Um, uh, well, first I want to say thank you for taking my call, and I, I want to also say that at first I really didn't like you. You didn't like me? I didn't like you because my it mama felt don't like, like you. She likes <laughs> everyone. It felt like the guy that I was talking to was like completely changing, and it felt like at first it was for the worst. But I could tell now that it's definitely been helping him. So right I want to say thank you for that. You're welcome. So my question is: I have a 17 year old son, and as he was growing up, you know him and. His, Myself and his father, we would have, we would, you know, he would spend time with his father. He would spend time with me. We don't, we're not, we weren't married or anything. But his father has always been, um, in your term, like a beta male. Um, but I never wanted my son to know, like, to, to hear that from me. So I always encouraged their relationship. I always wanted him to be around his father because I can't teach my son to be a man. Um, now that my son is 17 years old, he is starting to see things that his father is doing and he's losing more and more respect for him. And I just wanted some advice on how to maneuver through that because I don't want my son to have any resentment towards his father. Um, you know, his father's trying his best, but his father just doesn't know any better. So what would you recommend I do for him? To tell your son not to resent his father? that yeah. his father cannot help it. And if he resents his father, he's going to become like what he resents. He should uh, love his father by not resenting him uh, and that his father, just as you are, are doing the best that he can do and to not get angry about it. Okay. And he could be honest with his father about one-on-one -on -one talk about it and that kind of stuff, but just don't resent him. And he is doing the best that he can do. Okay. So do you think that, like, when my fa when my son is going through, like, problems, like, you know, guy problems, 
do I encourage him to go to his father and talk to him about it, or should I just bring somebody else that is mentally stronger to be in his life? When you say guy problem, can you give me an example of what you mean? You said what? You said when he's going through guy problems? Yeah, like, you know, like if he's dealing with, like my son is starting to date now. He's oh, okay. trying to decide what, what school he wants to go to. Like things that, like, you know, he was just trying to figure out what he wants to do with his life. Like, I can guide him, but it's, you know, I know I'm a female and I would guide him the way I would have wanted to, him to be raised. But I, I know that there's a different aspect to it. Have you overcome so, your anger? Yeah, I've absolutely overcome my anger. I used to be very angry with my mom and my dad when they got a divorce. And I was, I had a lot of um, fear of marriage and fear of, of just dealing with men and, and all of that. But now I have so much love for my parents. And You went and forgave um, them? You said what? Did you forgive your mother? Absolutely. You told her? Yes. And what did she say when you told her you forgive her what she did to you? She cried. Nice. <laughs> yeah, she and, cried. And your father, yeah. you told you forgive him for not protecting you from her? Correct. Nice. Well, here, here's what I recommend is that uh, get rid of this idea in your mind that you can't give him good advice because if you have forgiven, your heart has changed. And that means your Mm -hmm. mindset is changing, too, or has changed or is changing. And you will be able Mm -hmm. to give him the right advice. You'll see what to say at the time, and not based on your life, but based on what is right. And if he want to talk to his father, he'll naturally talk to his father, too, because if he doesn't resent his father, he's going to naturally talk to his father. And now that he's 17, you shouldn't have to tell him to not to talk to him or to talk to him. If he just had an anger, he would naturally be drawing onto his father anyway. Yeah. But okay. no, no, a man or a woman cannot tell another man or woman how to be a man. Being a man or a woman only comes from God. You could, you parents can teach you how to work. They can teach you how to pay bills. They can teach you how to save money, but they cannot teach you how to be a woman or a man. That only comes from the Father when you return to Him. You naturally grow yeah. into that. And it's nothing like what you can imagine. So get rid of that idea that you can or cannot teach Him anything as a woman, all right? Okay. Because okay. if you have love, it's the love which is of the Father that will work through you to give you the right words and the right everything to pass on to your son. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. That makes sense? Yes, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I will do that. Another thank hum- you. Uh, you're welcome, but another human being cannot make anybody be anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because if you yeah. make them be that, you have only created them in your image, and they're going to be unhappy. But if you're the example of that and allow the, the same light that's controlling you to control them, they'll be fine. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You. Are, are you doing the okay. silent prayer? I I just I'm watching your show right now. I just saw it when you were speaking to the other guy, so I'm going to try it. Yeah, do it. Do your little hoover and holler, and when you're done hoover and holler to the Lord, be still and know <laughs> Him, and He's going to guide you all the way. Just stay with it. All right. Okay. Amazing. Thank you. I wish you well. Bye. Bye now. Thank you. Okay. JD, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Thank you, Jesse. How you doing? All is well. Speak up a little bit. I say thank you, Jesse. How you doing? All is well. Hey, I wanted to ask you two questions. I want to ask, what do you do when the mother is posing her will against you? When your mother is doing that against you? Posing her will. You tell her to c- you. tell her. How old are you, JD? I'm uh, forty. You're forty. Tell her to cut it out, or you're done with her. Don't have anything to do with her. Tell her to stop it. Okay, all right. Now, my second one is what do you find as love that you speak upon that we don't have? It's in the heart. When you forgive your mother for imposing her will on you, hey, mother, I'm sorry for hating you for imposing your will. I know now that you can help it, and God will forgive you. Don't ask for forgiveness. 
God will forgive you and forgive your earthly father for not protecting you from your mother. He didn't know how to handle her because she was just like his mother. And when you forgive them, then God will change your heart from anger to perfect love. And it'll be amazing, J.D. Okay. But you got to forgive. Oh. You, can you give me an example how you, you know, you don't have to go too personal, but give me an example how your mother posed her will on you. I'm just saying, you know, like, you know, basically treating a person like a kid. Yeah. Like, Never yeah. listening, you yeah. know, and it's like, you know, I've been out on my own for, you know, like when I was, since I was a teen. So I pretty much know the ways of life. So right. when I'm explaining something to her, you know, it's like, you know, she wants to just do it her way. And that, that causes problems and friction, you know. Well, have you have you have you gone and forgiven her for what she's done to you? Well, I'm saying I tried to, but, you know, just like I, I listen to you a lot and I listen to, like, you know, the situations with single mothers. Yeah. And you say, forget the father. Well, she just got back with the father, you know, and it's like true because of <laughs> all the things I went through, you yeah. know, yeah. between between not having him there. And now he's back like he's running the show. And, you know, I don't have a care in the world for him. So. You know, it's a lot going on with me, you know, as a person. Well, you know, all well, the way down to my personal life with relationships, it reflects, you know. Yeah, but here's what I highly recommend, J.D., if you're ready to overcome all that. To both of them, just say, hey, I'm sorry for resenting you guys. I realize now, because what you're feeling and going through is exactly what they are feeling and going through. They can help themselves and just say, hey, I'm sorry for resenting you. I know now you can help yourself. You didn't have love. You don't have love. And I understand now. I'm sorry for resenting you. And God will forgive you. Do not ever ask anyone for forgiveness. Only God can forgive. You're apologizing for resenting them, not understanding as a kid they can help it. And God will forgive you, J.D., and everything will start to change for you. It will, it will get, life will become amazing for you. And, and don't have, don't expect either one of them to say I'm sorry, or or, or admit to anything, or anything. You don't need them to do that. That's on them. That's their hell if they want to stay in it. But you will yes, come out of hell. Have. I'm sorry. I say yes because they never have. Right, and they and you don't need them to. You apologize. You're only guilty of resenting them. You have never done anything wrong on your own since you've been on earth. You've been dri been driven or is driven by the anger that you have, which is of the devil. And he made a home in your mind and emotions. It's not you. It was never you. And God is not holding that against you. So you're not guilty of anything but unforgiveness. Forgive and you'll be free. Okay. One, one last thing, Jesse. Yes. Before I let you go. Go ahead. Him? Yes, sir. When, when, when are you going to hook that plantation up? <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. And, and J.D., right. are you doing the silent prayer? Uh, I'm going to start. Yeah, stay with it. Do it and stay with it, man, and stay on that straight and narrow. And again, forgive them. You don't need them to admit to anything. Have no expectation. And then go live your life. All right. You have a wonderful day, Jesse. You too, buddy. I wish you well. All right.